Over the course of several years, we've written tens of thousands of blog posts. We've also trained hundreds of people to come write for us to produce blog posts in bulk. And so as we've trained those writers, we've tried to learn what the most efficient way is in terms of the time we spend on an article and how many words are in the article to rank on Google and to produce that content quickly. Last summer, we did a very interesting study where we took a recent, uh, a new college student and we spent all summer, we just said, hey, we want to test a new way of creating blog posts that are much shorter. Our theory was, could we get more shots at the goal with shorter content that's easier to produce and just really churn it out? And it's okay if we miss a bunch of times, sometimes we're gonna hit and we could, get a, we could do really well. We ran the experiment where we gave him less time to write an article and articles were either 750 words, very short for a tiny little blog post, or they were 1500 words. And we thought, man, if we could do this, if we could rank there and spend half the time on a post, I mean, we would dominate. And the results were in pretty quickly. As we looked at the content that he was producing, even though he was doing a good job and, and was a good writer, it just wasn't good. It just wasn't good enough to rank on Google. And as we've seen the results from the site over the time, over time, it's just languished, um, which is really what we thought would happen because it is just too short and not enough time spent on research. And so we're going to now produce two different types of posts. In the past, we've taught three, and I'll talk later about why we've changed that as well. Uh, but after a lot of deliberation and study on word count and everything, we feel that there should be two different types of posts right now. Um, the first is called the response post. Response posts we spend two hours writing and they're 1,000 words in length. The other type of post that we produce is called a staple post. A staple post is 2,000 words in length plus, and we'll talk about what that plus means, and we spend three or four hours producing a staple post. So you really do want to remember those times. That's something that's going to come up over and over. You're going to need to kind of have this chart memorized. Let's talk about the response post. We used to write a lot more response posts. In fact, maybe even 60 to 70% of somebody's search analysis would end up being a response post. Now we're changing that that the response post is a little bit of a smaller portion of total search analysis. It's not that, that um, response post topics are not valuable. Response posts often are the big ones that bring in a ton of traffic. They can work really well finding those underserved niche questions. But we have also found the ability for Google to take a post and make it rank for many different things means that it's worth making a little bit meatier of content so that we have that information in the post so that Google can use it for those adjacent things. The other thing is um, we, us, following this system, we're really, really, really good at, at answer targets. The answer targets we've been creating are just crazy crushing it on Google. We'll talk about answer targets. You're going to know exactly how to do it. But I mean, we are absolutely slaying in the rankings because of that. And because us following this system, us as a community are, are, have gotten so good at that, um, we want to write posts that are a little bit longer so that we can get into some of those tangential topics and have the opportunity to hit answer targets there. That's why we're moving into more staple posts and a lesser percentage of response posts. We're still taking a lot of those great topics that we used to do response posts. We're just beefing them up a little bit. Again, it's not a giant change in the investment in time and, um, and word count. It's just a little bit that we find can get it a lot more traffic. We're also being a little bit more cautious about avoiding those topics where you rank number one, but it end up just not having search volume with the new search analysis process. And so that's why we're moving to this system of two. Now, the big posts, those pillar posts that we used to write back in the days um, before this, 
those have also performed really well. And so some people might say, why would we get rid of those? Those work really well. Totally, I fully agree. That's why we're calling a staple post two hours plus. Sometimes you're gonna get a topic that's just mega. It's just huge. Um, how many calories should an adult eat to lose weight? Whoa, that's a big topic. You could write the volumes of books about that topic, right? And so 2,000 words is pretty small for that, honestly. Maybe we want that to be a 6,000 word mega resource and that's okay to do still. We're just gonna classify them as a staple post because really over the simple response post, we really need to customize it to the need of that topic. And so that's why we have those two types of posts, the response post and staple post. Now you're going to learn exactly how to write those posts and what the format of those things differ a little bit. But placing them, our posts in these two major buckets can really help us in ordering content and also just planning how much time it takes our articles to write and matching the type of query, what kind of article it needs. You'll understand more as you go on through the course, but remember those two different types of posts.